Welcome. Yes. I'm Kathy, and I'm sitting because I'm about a week into whatever the virus is that, that everybody else got. I got it just a little bit later than they did, but I'm, I'm feeling better, and I don't think I'm coughing, and I'll keep my distance. Let me say three quick things about myself, then I will uh, do something else, and then we'll get immediately back to the program. The first thing is that in terms of Canvas, I think there are people who are clueless and they're the high-end users who can make it stand on its hind legs and bark. I'm in the middle of that range. Maybe a little bit toward the top. I'm not clueless, but I'm one of these instructors who has fair, fairly good techno skills, but not one of those bark on its hind legs people. I was a Canvas piloter, and that brings me to the second point. This is my fourth <laughs> semester with Canvas. I've got the archives to prove it. And with the same breath, let me say that the course that I'm going to describe, it's our fifth year teaching it. So this is not a new course. I'm not new to Canvas. It's come from a startup <laughs> operation to a reasonably mature course, and it took five years. Uh, the third thing I want to say is that the secret to my success is wicked smart graduate students. <laughs> and there are two of them here looking around. I'd like them to take a minute and introduce themselves. And then at the very end, I'm going to say the same thing. I'm good at a lot of things. I'm not half bad in the classroom, but the secret <coughs> to success is wicked smart graduate students. With that introduction, they look at each other. <laughs> Well, thanks, Kathy. Uh, glad to be here. I'm Tom. I'm one of the graduate students, and I've worked on this course for four years. Uh, was peripherally involved in it the first year, uh, which was kind of fortunate because the first year you're launching a course is the messiest, and I was able to kind of wipe my hands of most of that and kind of dip my toe in. But um, make other messes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stories. Um, but yeah, I I would say I'm I'm a similar proficiency level of Canvas with Kathy. We've We've, our use of it has evolved over time, but now it's, it's very routine in, in what we do and how the students kind of interact with it. And I'm Tim, very similar story to Tom, except that I've been with Kathy and this course since its inception back in 2013. Um, I think that's one of the reasons that Kathy brought me on board in the first place was to help um, design laboratory activities for this class. And yeah, similar with Tom in terms of Canvas proficiency, we use it for very specific things. Kathy's really great at designing the architecture and the look and feel and style. And then that means Tom and I just get to plug and play, basically. So um, yeah, and always happy to play in the same sandbox as John and Kathy. I've gotten to collaborate with John on numerous occasions, so it's well, great to be back. We should confess that, too, that John, you've been not only support, but actively this isn't about nudging me, us. Yes, OK. <laughs> so. Uh, now, as promised, I think I'm supposed to say what I tried, what happened, and what didn't happen. What I tried does go back five years, as Tim and Tom mentioned. It was the course I think I always wanted to teach, and I waited till I was at least 30 years in before I dared tackle it. It is a four-credit course. It's environmental science, and it does have a three-hour laboratory. So in terms of course structure, it's two hours of lecture, which are covers a variety of sins, and a three-hour lab. Another way of saying it is this course has a lot of moving parts. The environmental science course is designed to use the thousand acres of our campus as its own laboratory for, explain, for exploring energy, food, and trash, three aspects of sustainability on campus. So we're running around figuring out how the lights work, where all the wires go, how the buildings are heated and cooled, we're doing food systems, how does the food get to campus, and then of course when everything gets to campus, what waste gets <laughs> created in the process. There is no book for this course. So we've, it's taken us five years of chasing things down, stories, to be able to teach it. That said, the course, like the previous courses that I taught in a different lifetime, chemistry, 1-0, this or that courses, it has a lot of moving parts. It also has a lot of low-stakes 
testing and feedback. Meaning we're giving them feedback every week on something, either via a quiz, and I just grabbed off the shelf last week's, somehow we printed too many of them. This goes into Canvas grading book. The questions were all pre-announced, they all connect to something or other. That's what they had to do, and they had to do this every week in lecture. Take a quiz that I wrote and we grade and goes into the Canvas grade book. Low stakes testing. That's all it is. The part that what we did that what I want to talk about today is using Canvas to tackle something that for me has always been an instructional difficulty, which is if I've got students in lab doing something three hours every week of the semester, how are we going to assess it? Well, partly, we've got to get them to show up. That's, that's a story for another day. I think we've got that link, but we've, we get them there. And like many lab courses, you don't show up for lab, you don't get lab credit, you fail the course. So that one is taken care of. I'll pass this around. Oops, we've got more quizzes and things in here. Uh, I wrote this with help from a lot of people, but there are 15 activities and 15 weeks that each has a fair number of pages to go with it, and how are we going to assess it? I'll tell you how we're not going to assess it. For a variety of reasons, I am not a fan of written laboratory reports. Uh, that is a topic for another entire day. The labs at this point are not procedure, equipment, that what comes is. next? Math, <laughs> uh, uh, whatever you do, summary and conclusions. It's just not the way I'm doing it anymore. There are a whole bunch of activities. They prepare for lab. They prepare to investigate. They investigate. They explore. They reflect on what they did. And then they extend it out into other things. How are we going to grade it? That's where I'm going to look at Tim and Tom and say, since we're not turning in lengthy lab reports that are written and they all look kind of the same, with all these activities and questions, how on earth are we going to grade it? And then how are we going to put Canvas to use in a way that doesn't tax my time, their time, but nonetheless gives the students some feedback? So I'm going to look at you two and say, what on earth did we end up doing in Canvas using, by the way, let me just scroll through. Anybody who wants to see the syllabus, I just got it all in here with what you would expect. Testing a point scale. Uh, there are some surveys in there. Why do we do quizzes? I think I told you it's low stack tape, low stakes testing, frequent feedback. There are two exams. One's next week. Uh, there are sample exams. There are take home questions for the final. Blah 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 blah. There's the lab book I designed. One. Trade book to read, How Bad Are Bananas, The Carbon Footprint of Everything, it's hilarious, you yeah. tell that. A little bit about who we are teaching it, and I think then Canvas posts all the activities. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Is that the lab book you're talking about that you're passing around? Yes. So the students get this book? They it cost them $40, it's printed, they get the book just like that, everybody. That really is their Oh, text. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. clarify that. Right. Printed here on campus. Other questions before we get to the what happened, what are, what are we doing with trying to assess that every week? Uh, are the games and the activities in there online? I think the answer is pretty much no. The write-ups are all online. If they want to go to the calendar and get these electronically, everything that is there has an electronic copy posted online. Well, just like calendar. Yeah. But no, most of the things they're doing are hands-on with equipment or they're out running around <coughs> the campus. They do a lot of that with IR guns and in the heating and cooling plant and over to the, they eat a meal and do its carbon footprint. Um, they run around. So the content of the book is online, but they can't actually do anything. That's simulators. correct. Most, almost nothing is online. Almost everything is scamping around doing something. Yeah. 
Good question, thanks. If a student does forget his or her lab book, which happens rarely, oddly enough, uh, they do have a backup if they have some sort of device that they can record. And, and a lot of times they follow on their tablet or laptop and then write down notes in their, in their um, notebook. But we don't accept loose leaf, loose leaf paper as a way of replacing the lab book. They have to go back after the lab and transcribe their notes into their lab book. So it does offer a backup system of, yeah. of looking at that. Are the quizzes all on physical paper? They are they physical in? paper in the lecture hall, and they turn them in, and they all can be graded relatively quickly, but with partial credit. That's the difference than multiple choice. Every question on the quiz is also pre-announced, along with another 20. You know, I picked from a much longer list to do that. Yeah, I can show. And all the, on the calendars, for example, you'll see quiz every Tuesday. And posted on the calendar, you will see and find the sample quiz questions from which that was drawn. But they actually do paper and pencil quizzing. We, we learn a lot by reading their answers. And I, I find it extraordinarily difficult to write multiple choice questions that do what I want them to do. Uh, I've written for the college board. I know what it is to write a bad question and a good question. <laughs> It's, it's a choice we made not to do online quizzing with multiple choice, but rather to give them the list and then do it with paper and pencil. Yes? So why couldn't you have done exactly the same thing online? Because I do do exactly the same thing, but I do it all online. And so that was the question I had. I understand ah, that you why? have the pepper, and maybe there's something about writing with a pencil you think is better than the student typing the answer in. But, you know... It's, your question is well placed. At the moment when they take it, they do not have, if they're online and they're all doing it somewhere, they have access to everything else online to do it. They're doing it in a circumstance where they, they have just, they have to use what's in their head. They can't use the resources of something else doing it. Um, other one is, I'm not sure I was ready. Again, I put myself in the middle of the canvas folks. I'm not sure I was ready to take all of this and have it ready for them to do it every week online. I have enough trouble getting the questions ready and this ready for them on paper. Uh, and it's just me. There's no backup support doing anything but me teaching the course and wicked smart grad students. So no, some departments have an army of people who will help you do this. Uh, I made the choice, and I think your question is well placed. Couldn't I do it I mean, online? It's just, it's just how you started out. Mm -hmm. I, I perfectly understand. Yeah. Depends on what it's Maybe easy. next year. <laughs> okay. Anything else you're curious about before I turn it over to what we did to to grade the labs, other than turn in uh, written lab reports that. That's a story for another day. Why I moved away from them, but let me just say I moved away from. I also moved away from the structural labs I used to do with introduction, procedure, equipment. I, I don't do that anymore. Okay, Tim and Tom. Yeah, and I will also just say one of the lessons learned from the first year of doing the course, we didn't do the lab book the first year. And I can't remember what we did, if we had students print out their own lab and bring it or try and make it work online, but I just remember that it was a nightmare. And so every subsequent year, we've printed all the labs for them, bound them in a notebook, and so they have everything with them. And at least in lab, it's a little easier for them to have paper copies of things because not everyone has a laptop and um, they're moving about a lot. And so it's just, for us, I think it's nice to have everything compartmentalized in a notebook. Um, but, so we're talking about grading labs, right? Yes. How do we do it? Well, um, so to make t me and Tom and the other TA's life as easy as possible, because we each have 40 students, and they're each turning in a lab every week, sometimes multiple labs, because over the course of a three-hour laboratory activity, we might have them do uh, three activities, three different labs. They're you know condensed into one, but it's a lot of paper. It's a lot of questions. and so. To make our lives easier, we, we spot grade five questions from lab each week. And we don't tell the students which questions are going to be spot graded. So you know, the onus is on them to complete the lab in its entirety. Then the next week, 
they turn in a hard copy to us, and then... But they turn in the entire lab. They turn in the entire lab. Which is, on average, say, 15 pages, 100 students, 1,500 pages, three TAs, about 500 pages each. Uh, and so it's a nice, nice fat stack that we take home <laughs> every yeah. week. Uh, but then, so we kind of, the procedure generally goes that we, we as an instructional staff, all four of us, figure out which five questions to grade, with what, what are easier, easy for us to grade, but also uh, capture kind of the, the um, feel of the lab. And, and if they got these questions wrong, it would tell us something. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, what did you say? So you've got a bunch of questions in the lab, but you only grade five. Correct, for correctness. We look, we look at it for completion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Five correct, and then you give some overall grade, which you'll describe. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Each yeah. lab is worth twenty-five points, so we pick five questions. Each question is worth five points, and so just right here, I pulled up all the assignments in the course, and you can see they're split between laboratory activities listed first. If you keep scrolling down, there's a few surveys for the students. Here's their quizzes, exams, but. Um, the labs that are grayed out, we haven't published for the students just yet, but if we go back to, for example, their trip to Charter Street. Um, actually, yeah. So, so then we'll go in and we will physically create a rubric for the students. They don't, again, they don't see this until after we've graded uh, the labs and posted the grades. So they can't go and see which questions are gonna be specifically checked off until after it's, after it's been graded. But we'll pick five questions, and then we create this grading scale rubric. So each question is worth five points. Full credit would be five, partial is three, and then there's zero. And, and as Tom said, we're kind of strategic about which questions we pick so that we can, so that we can make this rubric, the five, three, zero rubric work. Um, and yeah, and then the nice thing about Canvas is once you build this rubric in, then if we were to go and, for example, actually grade the lab. Let's go back. All right, so just pulling up the grade book. So this first lab, let's go to lab week three. If I drop down and go to speed grader, the cool thing about having a rubric is that if you click view rubric over on the side, it brings it up. And let me see if I can pull this over and enlarge it. Yeah, so the neat thing is when you have this rubric pre-made, when we physically go through the lab and grade the questions, then we go in and we want to get the students' grades, Canvas will let you just pick like this, and boom, the student got 23 out of 25. Um, and you're doing this with a paper copy of the lab, but opening it up and using the rubric mm -hmm. online. Yeah. So it's a hybrid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They kind of get two versions of their grade because we'll physically return the lab to them the week after with a point score. And they can flip through the lab, see which question was graded and what their points were, but they can also go online and see the exact same thing in Canvas. And I try to encourage my students to go and see this rubric to see what a partial credit is, and I, uh, which frees up some of my time, because then when I'm grading, if it's correct, I just put a check next to it. So they know which questions they did and which ones they got right, but if they got it wrong, uh, you, I'll usually add some comments, and then uh, they, have, they have this to refer to also. Uh, and then if you check a checkbox when you're creating that rubric, it'll sum the points for you and automatically put that in the grade book too. Yeah. So you can just click boxes, it gives them an 18, I don't have to add late at night when I'm grading, and it just gives them that grade automatically. And then I look at that and write a grade on the front page. So your comments are on the physical sheet, but but if you were doing this online, you could. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah, you can add. Comments. There's a section here below the rubric where you can enter in comments online too. I don't often use this for labs, but students have other assignments like uh, there's take-home final components of their exam, and if they upload a submission, we can grade it, and then I'll, I might write some comments in the grade below or something. That just to say, hey, this is why you lost points, or this is what we're looking for, that kind of thing. I've, I've also used this comment section for uh, late submissions, yeah. just to mark that for everyone to see, that minus 10 for late submission, just to get that on the record, so they 
they know that when they see, oh, why did I get a 15 out of 25? I have, I have all my answers correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. I have just a question. So I can't read your rubric from back here, but that's all right. Do you use a specific rubric for each one of these? Mm -hmm. So you don't use the, so you have a question, I understand that. But you have these three categories. Mm -hmm. In theory, it could just be everything complete, whatever you want, uh, partially incomplete, doesn't address the topics mm -hmm. or whatever, and then fails to uh, address the question or something. So it could be very general like that, and then you can use the same one across all of these. Yeah. Okay, I mean, and I understand what you did. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just thinking that, um, because I couldn't quite see the words on there. I assume because of the different lengths of things that it was yeah. unique to that particular assignment as opposed yeah. to. It's unique to the assignment. And so, yeah, I can just read this last one for you too because I, I know what this question is about. We asked them to, um, I think, define the three elements of the triple bottom line of sustainability, which is that something is sustainable if it returns things to the economy, the environment, and society. And so this is, their definition is accurate and includes all three elements of sustainability. Partial credit if they got two out of three. No credit if it's left blank or if they missed more than yeah, one element. Or something. And so each each question is specific and each rubric is specific to that. And that. Yeah. But we can't. Canvas does save the rubrics mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. when, we're, when we're going through and, and populating the rubrics. We we often use inspired from last year. Mm -hmm. Change change a question or two or, or all of them. I thought of something else that might be handy. One issue with labs that I wanted to address is if you use a fairly similar lab activity a year after year, all the answers get out there. And so I do tend to change them some year to year. But the thing about this rubric is the questions that you spot grade can be changed year to year, which is one way of of varying what they what they need to do without having to change everything in the lab. So that that's another thing that I, I think you've made good use of. It's not spot grading the same questions from one year to the next if they happen to be repeated. And then the other thing I do is I go in there and every time we teach we learn something and we tweak and change. Yeah. So they're not identical, but they're a lot closer year to year than not. And this, this speed grader, and coupled with the rubric, and coupled with a couple of years of doing this, I think my record for grading 40 students is about 45 minutes, going through 500 pages and really whipping, whipping through it. And yeah, I definitely time myself with it. <laughs> so you said you had 40 students in the class? Uh, 40 in my sections. We have, so about we have one. a little over 100, yeah. and three TAs, so we each have between 30 and 40 students. A lab is 20 students max. The honors lab is 15. So that's how the math is going. Each TA has two lab sections. Right. And the room holds 20. That's how we came up with that number. Any other questions about lab? How long does it take them to do one of these? To do a quiz or a lab? No, to do a lab. So I'm assuming they do stuff in class. They take it home, they work on it, and then they bring it back, right? Or it's mostly it completed in lab time. But is it required to be completed in lab time? No. Oh, so that's what I mean, because we give them time to do something like that, too. But a lot of them take it home. Mm -hmm. So my just thought is, so your lab time is three hours, mm -hmm. right? So usually in three hours, they can complete. At the very Most minimum, time. three hours is enough for them to complete all the activities. It might not be enough for them to complete the activities and answer all the questions, but a lot of times it is. Um, but as you mentioned, some students will finish the activity and they just want to leave. They might have something else they need to go study for or do. So as long as they've got the activities complete, the questions they can then do on their own. Although it obviously helps to have us in the room where they're kind of thinking through some of these more reflective questions, analysis um, questions, and things like that. So, mm -hmm. And we're pretty responsive on email, too. Students know that they can email us and say, hey, I don't understand this question, or I'm not sure what's going on, and we'll be quick to get back to them on that. I thought of one more thing that involves these frequent feedback, low-stakes testing, and check on learning in lab. I 
you know, again, I just pulled the quiz off the shelf that I was about to throw away and passed it around. This one about the little red shrimp. I said, why are we quizzing them on a little red shrimp? Well, they took as one of their lab activities a field trip out to the Aldo Leopold Nature Center, the one on Monona Drive, and they have an ecosphere out there where it's a sealed system with little red brine shrimp and green algae and sunlight coming in and water and then the heat from the room. And the questions that show up on the quiz also, from the list I draw, I pull them right out of lab because the, the way the course is set up, I think the heart of it is, where'd that lab notebook go? Uh, come back. Uh, yeah, oh, that's sorry. fine. You can. You <laughs> can you can't have it back. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of what we spend our time on in the lecture connects to that. Before they went out to the Aldo Leopold Nature Center, I was running them through phenology and Aldo Leopold and his daughter um, Nina. I uh, mix up T and Tia Nelson and <laughs> Nina Bradley, Leopold Bradley. We we talk through a lot of things first so that when they go there, they've got some background. But the point again of what I'm saying is, things that are in there get checked, uh, tested on the quiz, they get spot graded, they're on the exams. Uh, it, it all weaves in, so it's not just one place that, that the, the grading for lab comes up. It's not just the rubric. Any other quick questions before we jump into the activities? <laughs>